Hey guys, it's me, Jessica. I hope you all are doing well. For today, I thought I would try to do a free kind of talking video. You know, I tend to rely on doing a little loose script, but this time I think I'm gonna just try my best to just talk and be more straightforward. And today's topic, I wanna talk about just life in general. And there's this one quote that inspired me to want to do this. And if you guys know Jessie J and her song, Who You Are, there's this one lyric that says, it's okay not to be okay. And when I was listening to this song yesterday, when I was trying to calm myself down because I was pretty... I was pretty upset, I was really sad, and you know, things weren't going the way I was hoping for them to go. So I listened to this song, and I was really trying to hold on, and just hearing those lyrics made me break down. And let's talk about that. So, as some of you may not know, I am a senior in college. I am 21 years old right now, and I'm a psychology major, and as you know, being a senior, there's so much things that you have to do. There's just a lot. And on top of applying to schools, writing your applications, and it feels overwhelming at times. And a lot of this comes from, I guess I would say, not having people close to me that I knew went to college. I kind of just relied on not only myself, but people at my school, but those people aren't close to me, you know, I don't have a close relationship with them, so it, it's not as easy to talk to them about things and questions, because I have this fear of, oh, they're going to think I'm dumb or that I'm not trying, when it's not that, it's just that, you know, this is all new to me, and with that, I've been applying to graduate schools. My goal is to get into a PhD program, but I'm applying to both PhD programs and master's programs, just in case. But the ultimate goal is a PhD, even if I have to do the master's first. But the thing about this is that I'm a very anxious individual. A lot of things cause me can cause me anxiety and one of the things that causes me anxiety is I guess you can say when I am um, when there's a lot of tight deadlines that I have to consider but not just the deadlines but the amount of work I have to try to cram in to that deadline you know it's a lot and it's been really hard to kind of manage that for me so yeah, and on top of that, because I feel like it's so hard to manage the anxiety that comes along with school and other things, lately I've been thinking to myself and I just figured, you know what, maybe now's the time to consider other options. Instead of trying to, you know, just deal with my anxiety on my own, anxiety, my ADHD, I should try to get help. Now, I've been to a bunch of therapists in my life, I have, but my thought was more so not just the ther not just therapy, but rather I should also try to do, I should also try to get myself on medication to help my, to help me overcome these issues. And it it's been difficult to come to that realization that maybe I might not be able to do this on my own like I was hoping for initially, but that's okay. You know, the goal is to grow and to get better. And as long as you're doing that in a safe way, mindfully with people, you know, that care about you, as long as you're being careful, I think that that's what matters most. Instead of thinking, you know what, I don't want to do this because there's a stigma attached to that. 
when in reality I know that this is something that I really need you know it's been a long time since I've thought about this and I would tell myself yeah maybe I should get myself into this but maybe I'll just wait and I kept waiting for months and it turned into years but now I'm I've been thinking about getting on medication for you know a few months even years at this point but I think it's time to really try to be firm with myself and make sure that I make an appointment to schedule something because this isn't the way to live and I think that if any of you guys feel like you know you're really struggling to manage and you don't think that other methods are helping or at least not as much as they could be perhaps that's a time where you should have that conversation with yourself on whether you think you might need to move on to different methods but of course not just with yourself also talk to a doctor counselors and make sure that you know you take into consideration what they tell you and yeah additionally I always had um I guess it comes from when I was younger I would always have this expectation that when I was older and you know an adult I would be happy and that things would be coming together not that things would be perfect but that they would be better than what they were and it hurts when I look back and I think wow not a lot has changed you know I've changed as a person a lot but regarding things like anxiety and depression and um, those kind of things they have stuck by me and there are times where they're not as bad as they could be but it's still there and it's very and it's uncomfortable it's difficult to go on with it so With happiness, as a child, I would always think, you know what, I'm going to be happy as an adult. So seeing that I'm not happy like I hoped I would be, it feels devastating. You know, it feels like I'm not where I'm supposed to be. But then again, I really feel as though social media comes to play with that. Because while I'm only 21, you know, you go on social media, you see people your age or younger, And they're doing incredible. And I am so happy for them. I'm so proud of them. You know, you see famous people and, you know, they're doing really well. And it just makes you think, wow, you know, they're doing that. Why am I still here? Not to say that um, they didn't deserve it. It's just to say, you know, I have to work harder. You know, I'm not doing this. I'm not good enough. And the reality is... The people that are finding such success at a young age, this isn't a common thing. You know, it takes time. I mean, a lot of people don't find financial security until they're in their 30s, at least, where they've found a secure job. But, you know, we try to compare ourselves to these social media figures, and that's just not the reality that we live in that's a very very small portion of it and it's rare and I think that we kind of need to remind ourselves that sometimes because it can be easy to compare ourselves and think you know what am I not working hard enough should I work harder but I say this to say if if you're working towards a goal just keep going you know Don't think, oh, I'm not doing what I should be. The thing is, you're working towards that goal. And everyone is going to do that differently. What matters is that as long as you keep going towards a goal that you have set for yourself, as long as you keep going, that's what matters. Don't worry if it takes a little longer than what you may hope for, because at least it's something that you're passionate about. And for me, that has always been psychology. I've always wanted to go into clinical psychology and be a clinician. And, you know, I'm working towards that. 
and I have to come to terms with the fact that this may take longer than what I hoped for. My goal was always to go straight from my bachelor's to my PhD because, you know, you don't have to go the master's route unless you want to. But with the way that things have been going, I might have to take the longer route. And after I finish my bachelor's this my bachelor's this year, I may have to go to um, my master's program. And the master's program I'm talking about is only two years. Some people say three, but I saw two on the website. So, you know, that's not bad. I guess it's just that I wanted to try to get things done in one shot, you know, just straight from my bachelor's to my PhD. But it's okay that there's going to be detours. I have to accept that. And I just have to keep pushing myself. And with that quote, it's okay not to be okay, it kind of tells me that, you know what? Happiness, sure, it's a great goal to have, but sometimes it'll take some time before you can achieve that kind of happiness that you want. And it's not to say that it's not there, that it'll it'll never come to you. It's just to say it may take a little time. It may take some time. And how long it takes is different for everyone in their circumstances. For one person, they may be depressed, but they may find that they are able to find happiness, let's say, in a year after therapy and you know, changing their lifestyle, a year is all it takes for them to find their happiness. But for another person, it could take 10 years, it could take 20 years, and that's not to be, that's not to discourage you from trying and from trying to get to that point. It's just to say that it's a different journey for everyone. But I'd like to think that when you get to that side of the journey, when you get to the the point where you have reached happiness and you can now look at your life and be satisfied, I think it'll be well worth it in the end. So, you know, keep going and just know that, like, you can do it. You can. It doesn't matter what anyone told you. You can do this. You have the power to achieve what it is that you would like to achieve. Just keep going. Sometimes that's all we can really tell ourselves. Just keep going, keep doing what you need to do to get there, and it'll happen one day. But I feel like when some people take into consideration depression, they think, oh, you need a good support system. You need to talk to, you need to be in connection with your family and friends so you have a good support system to help you out. But here's the reality. Not everyone has that kind of support system not everyone has someone that they can go to someone that's close to them that they can go to their support system may solely be you know a psychologist and that's not a terrible thing that can change with time it's just to say not all of us have those systems in place at first for me while I have my mom very close with I don't have a lot of friends in fact I would even say I have no friends because I think that a lot of times we throw away we throw around the word friends a lot when in reality some people are just acquaintances or they're just friends because you share a class but as soon as you don't have that class together anymore you know you never hear from them they're a stranger again because they were just your friend because they had that class with you they needed someone to just talk about the assignments with someone to study with but not someone that they considered their friend and it hurts when you come to that realization thankfully I've never been someone that's just like, oh, this person is definitely my friend. In my mind, I'm always just like, yeah, I'm aware that this is just an acquaintanceship and that it'll soon end. And I always make an effort to not have it end. 
you know, I try to make sure I contact them to keep that line of communication open, but sometimes it just doesn't work out the way that you hope, and that's okay. I accept that friendship may not be something that I'll have, and it's not to say I'll never have friends, it's just to say I may not have that kind of friendship that I always idealized, that kind of friendship where you were friends since elementary school and you know your best friends and you talk to each other all the time you hang out I may not have that friendship and that is okay you know I can't base how my life should be based on others lives you know everyone is different and this is my own life and it's gonna turn out how it will turn out I can't ask that it's gonna be the way someone else's life is All I can do is try to live the life that I have to the best of my abilities and accept that my life may not be the ideal life that I always wanted, but, you know, it's life. And I just got to give it a chance. I got to keep going. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday. Bye. Thank you.